So it's Martin Green here from Dairy Program uh, in captivity, not for the first time and hopefully the last. I don't know what that was, but it moved. Um, there are pygmy things in here. They are of the monkey variety. They are not uh, locals, it seems to me, but we are in Dublin Zoo. It's not my back garden, uh, and I'm not in my own either, which is very, very handy. Why are we here? Dublin Zoo, you know the programme, it's about the zoo on RT1 TV on a Thursday at 7 o'clock in conjunction with the EBS. And uh, I have Susan O'Brien, who's here, who can explain everything about what surrounds me. <laughs> what, what am I saying? Now, you're, you're, what do you refer to as? Um, just Keeper, Susan. Ke no, well, Susan, obviously, but it's Keeper, yeah. Keeper, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell, yeah. Me, tell me what we're dealing with here. Pygmy what? These are pygmy marmosets, so they're a little small, the smallest true primate in the world. Right. Um, little tiny, tiny monkey, maybe the size of my hand, so tiny little monkeys. And where are these guys from? Um, these guys, you find them in the wild, uh, Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, um, everywhere in South America, basically rainforest, nice rainforest habitats. Okay. And yeah. how many do you have? Uh, at the moment, we have, we have two different groups. We have eight uh, and one group and two, another breeding pair and another group. There's eight around us in here. Uh, they're in here, yeah, yeah. They're all they're tiny, so they're all hiding around the place. There's one just peeping in the door there. Actually, I can see him uh, having a little eyeball in the little hatch here, saying hello. Oh, I see. Oh, he is, he is tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. He is tiny. And so do you give, do you Mr. give Mr. Big? We call Mr. Him. Big. Mr. Big. I was yeah. going to say, do you give them names? Clearly, you don't. <laughs> uh, but that what's a, what's on top of my head? Just though? up here, then we have um, a sloat. This is a two-toed um, sloat. So they're one of the slowest uh, mammals in the world. <laughs> so we're the slowest and the smallest. <laughs> and how come he's in here with them? How does they're that work? Basically, uh, in, a, in the wild, these animals would mix together in the wild. They'd be in the same kind of habitat together. Right. So it's just a natural way of keeping them. And it's, you know, it keeps each other busy. We'll often see the pygmies uh, grooming the sloats. Um, really? So that's really nice. So they do kind of interact. So it's just something yeah. else for them to interact with. It's, it's and what about natural. you and getting on with them? I mean, have you ever had any issues with these guys? Or are they all, are they fairly friendly? Or what's the yeah, story? Yeah, the, the, these guys, they're nice. They, um, they don't really come to us too much and we wouldn't you know we wouldn't you don't pet them or anything like that like they are still wild animals so yes. um and we just we keep a healthy distance you know now they would come down sometimes and maybe take a bit of food from your hand um and that's probably about as close as we right. get to them. so the yeah. trick when you're in with them is not to bring any food yes it, it seems just, to me there would just be monkeys everywhere there yes. would be, be, be monkeyed out basically <laughs> yes, yes. And, and are they perceived as a family therefore yeah they would do they live in family groups so this is quite normal um, and we like to keep them here you'd have a breeding pair so mommy and daddy and they have their offspring and usually um they'd have maybe three or four litters over the space of maybe, maybe three years yeah. and the youngsters uh, will stay on and look after the babies uh, so they help rear their siblings basically and what about feeding them what's the what's the feeding situation uh, feeding their gumnivores so we feed them um, a special marmoset gum gumnivore so right. they eat gum basically they take little holes out in the trees and the gum or sap comes sap out come and they, these uh, lick up the subs. We feed them maybe 50% of their diet is gum, and then they eat lots of creepy crawlies and insects and horrible. Meals. I can't wait to leave here, <laughs> to be perfectly frank. By the way, you mentioned about the sloth up here. Yes. Um, this is a, a female. This is the female. Yeah. And this is the partner. The boyfriend is in the box. He's in the box over here as well. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He's, he's is that his male. home? That's his home. He, he lives in there. He's happy enough. He just, they like to be kind of tucked up nice and, nice and cozy. He is, so. when I look at him, the epitome of laziness. I'm going to come back as a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not coming back at all, quite frankly. Uh, there it is. That's Dublin Zoo uh, for, for the moment. Thank you so much. No uh, I leave you to feed them. And a reminder of what we were looking at, not the sloth, the other guys are... The pygmy, pygmy marmosets. Pygmy marmosets. I knew that. I want to be like you. I want to walk 